Hi Bobcats, in this video we're going to practice drawing Lewis dot structures. Um, all of the structures in this video are fairly straightforward. We're not going to need to draw any double or triple bonds. If you're looking for examples with those, you'll want to take a look at the next video. Our objective is to practice drawing these Lewis dot structures. For our first example, let's draw the Lewis dot structure for water. Water uh, is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. So if we add up the valence electrons, hydrogen is group in group number one, which means each hydrogen atom brings one valence electron, but the compound has two of them. So we're going to take two, which is the subscript, times one, which is the number of valence electrons that the hydrogen brings. And then we're going to add to it the valence electrons that come from oxygen. Oxygen's in group 16, so we use the last digit of the group number, which is six, and it brings six valence electrons. Also, there's just a single oxygen atom, so you could multiply by one if you wanted, but I usually don't show that. So we have two times one plus six, which gives us a grand total of eight valence electrons. And for the backbone, we need to decide if hydrogen or oxygen will be in the middle. Hydrogen's never the middle, so that means oxygen will be in the middle. And when we draw the outside atoms, we're going to use the positions above and below and to the left and to the right. And it doesn't matter which of those four positions we put the hydrogens in. We could put one on the left and one on the right. It would also be perfectly valid to put, say, one on the left and one up top or we could put one up top and one down below. It really doesn't matter which of those four positions we put the atoms in. Any of these would be equivalent. When we go to place the valence electrons into the structure, we want to start by making the bonds first. So we're going to put a pair of electrons between oxygen and hydrogen. We'll put another pair here. I've now placed four of our eight valence electrons. Um, since I have taken care of all my outside atoms, hydrogen only wants a duet, so once we make the bond, we're in good shape. Um, and so now I put any leftover atoms on this, any leftover electrons on the central atom. So I still have four to place. So there we go with five, six, seven, and eight. Now when I look at this structure, each one of the hydrogen atoms has a duet of electrons associated with it. And I just lost my pen. Hold on, I was trying to change colors and I'm not sure what happened. Uh, so for hydrogen, let's see what we've got here. Um, so for hydrogen, there are two electrons immediately adjacent to um, both of the hydrogen atoms. So hydrogen's octet is satisfied. For the oxygen, if we look at the electrons that are immediately adjacent to it, we have the shared pairs, but we also have the lone pairs. And so we have a grand total of eight electrons, which satisfies our octets. Any lone pairs count only towards the octet on one atom, but shared pairs count towards the octet or the duet on both atoms that are sharing them. In the case of ammonia, uh, we have one nitrogen atom, which is in group 15, so it's going to bring five valence electrons. Then we have three hydrogens, and each one brings one. So once again, we're going to have eight valence electrons to place. And to create our backbone between nitrogen and hydrogen, since hydrogen's never in the middle, nitrogen must be. And then we can place the three hydrogens any positions that we want. We just need um, to make sure that we're sticking with top, bottom, left, and right. Now, when we go to place the valence electrons into our structure, we want to start by putting octets on the outside atoms. But the outside atoms are hydrogen, so they only want to duet. So we just need to place the bond. So we'll have two electrons there, two electrons there, and two electrons there. That takes care of all of the outside atoms because each hydrogen now has a duet. But we still have two electrons left over since we have to place eight. So those extra two go on our central atom as a lone pair. 
And when we look at the octets, the central nitrogen atom has eight electrons associated with it. And the outside uh, hydrogen, um, each one of them has two electrons associated with it for that nice duet that hydrogen wants. To draw the loose dot structure of nitrogen trifluoride, um, I guess I want to illustrate that the we can do the backbone first before we do the electron count. So nitrogen can go in the middle, and hydrogen, I'm sorry, fluorines uh, will go on the outside positions. We can put them in any three of the four positions. For counting our electrons, um, oh, whoops, before I move on to that, the way we pick between nitrogen and fluorine is that the least electronegative element goes in the middle. Fluorine is the most electronegative element, so it must be on the outside. Um, the biggest electronegativities are that upper right corner of the table. The farther away you get from that, um, the lower the electronegativity. Another way that you can pick this is if you have one atom of an element and three atoms of a different element, the element that you have one of will be your middle atom, and that's almost always going to be the first atom written in the formula. All right, so there's our backbone. For our valence electron count, nitrogen's in group 15 and brings one, and then we have three fluorines, and fluorine is in group 17, so the last digit of that is a seven, so each fluorine brings seven valence electrons and there are three fluorines. So seven times three is 21, plus five is 26. So we have 26 valence electrons to put in the backbone that we already drew. We will start by placing octets on the outside atoms. When I do that, I always start with the bonding electrons. Um, so there are eight of our electrons used up. If I put another octet here, that'll be 16. And if I put another octet here, that'll be 24 but we need to place 26, so the leftovers go on the central atom. And I don't want to mark this up too terribly much, so um, I think if you look closely at this, you'll see that each atom does indeed have an octet. When we draw a structure that looks like this, all of those electrons can be uh, kind of confusing to look at. So typically with structures like this, we'll replace the bonding pairs with a line to indicate uh, a bond. So one line is equivalent to two dots for bonding pairs. So we could redraw the structure to look something like this. And that's with the bonding pairs replaced by a line, but any lone pairs should still be drawn as dots. So all of those lone pairs still need to be drawn in. And when I'm done here, these two structures are equivalent to one another. Our objective was to draw Lewis dot structures, so we looked at several examples of that.